You can find that quote and a quote before it on pages XV through XVI. With that being said, we now open up for questions. Or class, whatever you want. So, how could we use this in debate? Let's just brainstorm this for a second or so. Is there a 1AC that we can write? I know that there's 1AC already existing, and it's partially about science fiction. Could we have one that's like, we actually find these dudes? Space traders. Sure. Come on, give me some ideas here. Amir. Extra funding for study. Extra funding for the search for, intel for extraterrestrial intelligence. Uh, isn't there like a risk that we find a new species of aliens that like we'll, con like, we'll take our imperial like problems from here to there and like do the same thing that we did there? I, I don't know what about human history has convinced you that if we met an alien race we might try to take them over. Uh, we seem to have been generally nice to every other type of human we've ever met or come across. <laughs> or so I'm not really sure that that would ever happen or would need to occur. I think we would actually be fairly nice and not do anything mean to them whatsoever. <laughs> you really think that? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, we suck. <laughs> we would probably try to bomb them or something and it probably wouldn't kill them because their technology is much more advanced than ours and that would just make them angry. And we would be like, well, let's keep trying to bomb them. And before we knew it, they would just be like, we're just going to leave because we, we don't even know what they're doing. They're like the ants. They're dogs. We don't know. Yeah? Why do we like humanity more Well, the reason that we assume that is simple, uh, we have not mastered intergalactic travel. So there's one of two situations. Either A, we develop that travel enough to be able to get to the far planets which is not something we're even close to being able to do right now because we have trouble building colonies on the moon, Mars, etc. That one's still a very far off plan by a couple of different decades. Uh, with that being said, it's going to take us so long to be able to get to them that we just assume that they'll get to us first. And if they did get to us, it means that they've mastered technologically forms of flight, travel, gravity, resources, and a number of other things. That both means they're just much more equipped than us, but it also means that they have found more things to scientifically study that we can't even boggle our minds with. Does that make sense? Yeah? Why does there have to be interaction between things and the aliens? Why can't we just what? Why can't we just be people Why does there have to be interaction? Well, that's one of the arguments for the people uh, who exist is that, or well, who say that, you know, aliens don't exist, is that we should act as if they don't, because we don't really know. Now, are you saying that if we do discover they're there, that we don't really even have to talk to them? Like, why do we have to go uh, Well, I mean, people are just curious. Perhaps they have, um, if they were peaceful, for instance, uh, perhaps they have answers to things like the meaning of life, which we have not exactly found out yet. <laughs> Perhaps they have different types of resources that would be able to cure the infinite number of diseases that we have or overpopulation. Uh, we still can't figure out how to live past the average age of 70. Uh, so maybe they have an answer to that that will allow us to not lose our loved ones. Um, there's maybe there's stuff that they have that we could use to advance ourselves and protect our, our, our folks so that we don't have to deal with death, inevitable loss, and stuff like that. Yeah? It would be a benevolent science app, not to a serious What? The benevolent science on the satellite. I'm pretty sure it assumes that aliens exist, right? Oh, It assumes that aliens exist. It's just, uh, it's essentially, uh, I don't know, I haven't actually read the app. I'm assuming that it's an imagination of the way that we could talk to aliens in the future and thus develop an interaction with them, or at least begin to think that it's possible. Because right now we have a block on rational policy making that allows us to not think about that particular search in serious policy discussion. Because we're all so focused on competition and growth of the economy and overpopulation and all these other types of things. Yeah? Since we don't have like actual historical knowledge of aliens, how do these guys claim to know so much about the Alpha Draconians? Uh, well, that's the disputed fact. Uh, cause 
from your perspective, you assume that we have no real knowledge, etc. Uh, there are people who assume that you can interpret those same ancient texts to be along the same lines. There are other texts which, su which suggest, suggest that the Alpha Draconians exist as well. Um, they're just, by our human sciences, not as reliable or verifiable as we would like them to be. A lot of them say they're here, too. I mean, they're talking to them. That's how they get that information. Yeah, the, the, the argument that Brent was advancing was that we're, there are humans who are being spoken to by the different sets of aliens, and that's how they know that they exist. So that's eyewitness account, uh, which would we'll say that they're wrong. You're not really them. I don't know. Next. Sick. <coughs> so, remember, yeah, go ahead, Ange. Uh, alien border exists and they were trying to invade us, which means, like, uh, which may mean, like, the world would have to work together to try to, like, scare them off. Yeah. Like, could stop, like, yours. Yeah, I mean, this is the very end of Independence Day, spoiler alert, where we all have to come together and figure out ways to coexist just so that we can, you know, not die. Uh, so that's one of the ideas that if an alien attack didn't happen, perhaps we would find a way to uh, be better at dealing with that. Um, and that's, you know, maybe that would be positive for us. Do you think aliens exist? Me? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't even care. I, I, I honestly just don't think about it on a daily basis. I have really no opinion whatsoever. I have very close friends <coughs> who are very enveloped in things like the 2012 ideas and um, the belief that, well, they believe a lot of things that humans were created by aliens and that explains quite a bit of stuff. I, I just prefer willful, <coughs> willful ignorance and try not to figure it out for myself. It makes my day-to-day -day go a little bit easier and happier. I had this great question that I forgot. <laughs> well, maybe the reptilians will tell you what they answer. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember your question. Um, what frontline do you uh, recommend that we prepare for alien you know, like apps and things and stuff? Uh, well, there's a couple of different ones. You really need to have the very base level. They do exist or don't exist down. Just so you can be like, you know, at the very least, you're just not going to win the risk of this existing or whatever it is. Um, it depends. I mean, some people will say, like on this topic, if you melt, there will be a case turn that says that if you lead to space militarization, the aliens will take that as offensive and that you are trying to come at them and they will respond very violently to our threat by just destroying us. Um, there are some people who say that humans are developing technologies that would end the universe and would end alien life and aliens are nice and peaceful folks. So there's no reason to assume that we should do anything to them. Uh, so we should, like, you know, that, that's part of the wipeout debate is that we should kill ourselves off before we destroy the universe with particle accelerators or black holes or whatever it is. Otherwise, we kill off the aliens, too. So there's lots of ass and stuff. Like I said, the strongest block would be to have a do exist and don't exist block and then have arguments about if they're peaceful, if they aren't peaceful, then so you can have both of those useful at any given time. Yeah. Do you think it would be abusive to fiat alien action? Like, say, like an asteroid death? Do you like, we fiat that aliens will save us from giant asteroids crashing into the Earth? What do you think? I don't know what abusive means, but it seems as if there's not exactly a strong literature based to be able to predict our interaction with alien nations and how they view American policy uh, since we have not officially had any dialogue with said particular country. So with that being said, it's really hard to understand um, what dissent you would get from the aliens <coughs> do a counterplan. 
the lack of a solvency advocate that you would be able to have for the plan makes it to where it would be kind of terrible. Now, in theory, though, I mean, if the aliens are that advanced, they could probably take over helium-free mining for us or solar-powered satellites or any number of things and probably do it a little bit more efficiently than we do. And that's what kind of the idea is. There's like rumors that they built the pyramids, did a bunch of stuff that like just conceivably humans could never do. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, would, it would be a little bit difficult to have, if I were, if I were an app, I would be reading some theory arguments because that kind of plan just sounds like it's got no real chance of having literature bases against it. Anyone else?